a conversation with Gordon Vidal uh, at this moment in history is particularly relevant. Um, I'm a year older than Gore. Measuring uh, our ages, uh, we have lived through 20 presidential elections. Uh, 2008 will be our 21st presidential election. Perhaps we can begin the conversation more by saying, let's look back at those 20 elections and are there lessons for us? And yes. What do we remember about it? Darwin was wrong. <laughs> Anyway, this day really belongs. The reason I'm, I'm able to be here was I was up in uh, Santa Barbara. It was Tim Robbins' 50th birthday. And his lady friend, Susan Sarandon, she, I think she's October 7th. And we've always blended our birthdays together. She was one of her first plays on Broadway, was one of mine. And we were just quite used to seeing each other. As, in the sign of Libra. <laughs> and so I went up to celebrate her. We don't say what year it was, but she was, uh, she's in good form. And we're all Libra-esques, as is Tim. He's an honorary Libra. <laughs> and so I came down, I slept all the way down from Santa Barbara, and I woke up to see a sign which announced the Vidal event. And I thought, oh, here we go again. Um, what does this mean? I can remember as a kid, when I was brought up on the East Coast of the United States, and there was uh, the only Vidal in the Manhattan phone book was Eugene Luther Vidal, my father. There's nobody else. There's no one else. And I thought, well, I guess these are some of the new people here. They're, they're <laughs> taking our place. I'm not going to write Lou Dobbs yet. <laughs> but I think it's nice, you know, there's another generation. And after the, the Great War of 1846, when we bravely stole all this land from the Mexicans, uh, they're now sensibly reoccupying it. <laughs> I had a good Mexican lunch today, I can tell you that. <laughs> and uh, it's a funny name, Vidal, because it's just, you know, practically everybody in politics you ever hear of is called Smith or Smathers or something like that, you know, something hearty. Rather stout, if not stout hearted. And I'm, just, I'm quite used to having been brought up in that kind of Anglo-Saxon world. At the same time, I get surprises. I was at a very grand party in London some years ago. And a magnificent lady, a duchess at least, came up to me and said, Oh, Mr. Vidal, I want you to do me because you've done so many of my friends. <laughs> Surely, madam, you jest. I said, no, no, and she rattled off a bunch of names, and all unfamiliar to me. And I said, well, I'd be very happy to, what, what, had they, what did they do for you? And she thought I was Vidal Quadros, a portrait painter from Barcelona. <laughs> the next one to come up to me said, oh, shook her head like that in front of me. I thought, this woman is mad, you know. <laughs> I expected the knife, anything. So this, was, this was it, you know. Charlotte Corday strikes again. <laughs> I said, oh, Madam, collect yourself, please, collect yourself. Uh, what have you in mind? She said, she thought I was Vidal Sassoon. <laughs> I don't know if you saw a wondrously funny comic called Ali G. <laughs> and he got together what he thought were about, you know, a ten of the dullest people in the United States, which he kindly, you know, included me. 
<laughs> and he was out to get our goats. Well, he got a lot of goats, but awful Andy Rooney. I mean, what hysterical because he didn't know who Andy Rooney was. And I'd never heard of Andy Rooney myself. Here I am, a local. So, you know, you get little surprises if you have a peculiar name. Anyway, enough of me. Let us talk about the ACLU. Let us talk about the audience. Let us talk about the kind of terror that we've been involved in involuntarily, and I would think on the side of most of us, in the United States. And due to the ticking of the clock, it's all going to be over with. I still think they're going to find at the last minute, oh, I can't go back to Crawford. Uh, there's no water there. <laughs> Have pity on the president. Collect water, and then people will come by with silver flats for us to fill out of the tank. <laughs> He's generous, you know. He might let you have a swallow, even. And I think, you know, we are at least to be freed of a cruel and unnatural master. Okay, classicists, who wrote that line? Sophocles. Oh, no, Moses. <laughs> Moses never let on he had sex. <laughs> Invest that Jesus saved. <laughs> Sophocles men, he, he had turned 80, and I just turned how old I am? 83. 83. <laughs> you just. <laughs> I'm 83, and. Uh, Sophocles had just turned 80, and he said, I'm at last free of a cruel and insane master. Sex. <laughs> okay, girls, come to, the, come to the front of the class. <laughs> tell us all about how harrowing it was. <laughs> okay, start. <laughs> I think back as I look at the headlines in the newspapers these last few days, the extraordinary headlines every single day of the collapse of our economy and the newspapers just the past day or two that emphasized the fact that what we have is a worldwide uh, economic crisis, not just an American economic crisis. And that reminds me so much of, of the 30s and where this country was then. Uh, how that how will we resolve the problems that we do not completely solve in the 30s, even with the uh, efforts of the Roosevelt administration? Now, well, I, there, there was the doctrine of American exceptionalism, which we didn't have to pay for anything we did, and this has led to a lot of trouble. Other countries are not amused by the fact that they think we get away with murder, and we try to pretend they get away with even more murder. But they don't. And there was a British guy on television a day or two ago, and he was just saying some Americans never thought they would have to pay for anything. <laughs> just put it on the car. One day or other, you're clean. Well, they're not clean. You still owe what you have been spending. I was brought up in a southern family, uh, and we lost, as some of you may have heard, we lost the Civil War. <laughs> we were very much aware that we were the losers. And my first thing, my grandmother, she was the brains of the family, basically. Senator Gore was the genius, but Mrs. Gore was, she, well, she said, the Gores are very brilliant people. They got no sense. 